In light of recent events in Paris, which has led to the unfortunate death of 10 journalists, once again, Muslims find themselves at the centre of attention regarding the whole freedom of speech debate and whether Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, should be satirised. Before we look into how Islam promotes and advocates open dialogue at all levels of society, let's briefly look into the origins of the concept of freedom of speech. Free speech arose in uh, Europe as a response to uh, arbitrary rule, as a response to uh, restrictions on uh, human intellectual development and the pursuit of, of truth. Free speech was used as, as a utility for something else. It wasn't for its own, in its own sake, and it was used as a utility to achieve truth and to account uh, injustice or what was wrong and for the, you know, the improvement of, of mankind. Uh, it was never envisioned by the early you know, liberal founding fathers that free speech would be used for anything except those things. They didn't, certainly didn't countenance use of free speech for gratuitous insult or to uh, insult uh, social mores which are fundamental to keeping stability in that society. In fact, many of them uh, always gave caveats for that the, the sovereign can impose limits to prevent um, uh, social disorder. So it was never really envisioned uh, free speech to be uh, open and gratuitous, but rather it had a purpose, and its purpose was the pursuit of truth and accountability. It's clear that the main objectives of freedom of speech was to establish justice, accountability and human progression. Are those objectives still the same today, or is it applied with double standards? Clearly there are double standards in free speech. You can see, for example, in the case of Nicolas Sarkozy in France where uh, he sought the prosecution of people uh, for writing lyrics and raps against him. You can see in um, Denmark where uh, the publication of cartoons was prevented uh, because they were in relation to the Jewish community. Uh, so there are evidently uh, double standards. Now that we've understood that absolute free speech does not exist and speech in itself is restricted by specific laws which are influenced by the dominant moral ethics of a society, how does Islam promote dialogue and debate? Does it recognise free speech? If so, how is it manifested and can it be applied today? The Islamic view on speech is very coherent. Yes, it allows you to express yourself intellectually, have dialogue and debate. The Quran says, Debate in ways that are better. Use good speech. God doesn't love the utterance of evil speech. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, upon whom be peace said that we must have good manners, that we should speak good or remain silent. And I want to make it very clear that the Islamic intellectual and spiritual tradition almost forces us from that perspective to engage in dialogue and debate and in, and in intellectual activity even if we're discussing with others who we know that their views are abhorrent to us we can't curse them it must be couched in human language because freedom of speech is not an end it's a means it's a means to truth justice and accountability free speech is something that although we're told in the west is boundless limitless in fact every society including our own here has limits on it it has limits on uh, incitement to hatred and so forth and so uh, uh, def defaming somebody being libelous towards somebody these are all crimes in fact for which you can be prosecuted uh, in the same way uh, free speech surely cannot be the freedom to insult how did freedom of speech become the right to offend or the freedom to insult? And what does that mean for the basic interaction between humans? Imagine Stephen Hawking, one of the most famous scientists, wanted to deliver a presentation on string theory in physics. It was a landmark presentation. It was an amazing project, amazing discoveries in quantum theory or whatever they talk about, right? And in his presentation, he starts off by cursing our mothers. Is that going to facilitate truth and human progress? Imagine, for example, political activists wanted to take to account dictators 
and they started by saying, hey, your mother is so-and-so and cursed the mother of the dictator. Is that going to facilitate accountability? Imagine going to a court of law and the jury and the judge, they start degrading each other and swearing at each other. Is that going to facilitate justice? Do you see something here? Freedom to insult, freedom to degrade, freedom to dishonor goes against the very objectives of freedom of speech. And this is the point. Muslims are not shy concerning dialogue and debate. The Quran tells us to have debates. The Quran says very clearly, O oh people of Luqiyya, Ahlul Kitab, ta'alu ila kalimatin sawa'in bainana wa bainakum. Come, come to a word that is equal between us and you. Using this terminology, you can see clearly that, it, that it's an open invitation to dialogue and to a common word, a common ground, a common denominator. Even Professor Rosalind Gwynn, she says that the reason that the Islamic scholars had intellectual engagement is because they were encouraged by the Qur'an. But what we say is this, just be human. Because a civilized society isn't a society that basically degrades each other and defames and dishonors and uses vile speech. We're human beings, so let's be human beings. If that's how Islam has historically approached rational debate and open dialogue, why should it be any different today? Perhaps this is the best way to approach the situation regarding the caricatures of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. One such campaign that we should support is the Islamic Education and Research Academy's new campaign, Don't Hate Debate, which invites Muslims and non-Muslims, people of faith and no faith, to have an open dialogue on a shared platform. Be just plus closer to God consciousness. We need to teach these people out of mercy. Because yes, it wasn't there. And you're saying there's no cause. It, there, it wasn't, you know, point of, yeah, I'm, I'm saying this. I'm saying.